stand today together in one accord in the house of God. And let's just lift our voices up to him for a little while. Let's just give him praise together as one body in Christ. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence today. Jesus, we thank you for this privilege to walk in this house and to feel your presence and your anointing. I pray your glory would come down, Lord. No matter if we're here in this building or we're watching over the live stream, God, we pray that your word would speak today. I believe you have a word for each of us. If we'll just open our hearts, open our ears, plow that ground, that soil of our heart, and make it fertile and receptive of the seed of your word, Lord God. I pray, God. I know we've had a lot going on this week with family, with holidays. But God, you are always there. None of what we had, none of what we did this week would be possible without you, Jesus. Without your love and without your grace in our lives, God. That's the only way we can have joy and peace in our lives. And I thank you for it, God. We thank you for another opportunity, Jesus, to come in your midst, Lord Jesus. To come together in one accord and worship you, God, for you are worthy, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're just going to give everything we have. We're going to put everything aside from this week, from next week, everything we might face when we leave these doors. We're going to put it all aside right now. We're going to focus our energy, focus our thoughts, focus our worship, our passion, our love upon you, Father, for you are worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all glory and honor. Lord, you're worthy. You gave us life. You gave us hope. You gave us eternal life in heaven with you, Father. You gave us a reason to live, oh God. You give us love, joy, and peace. You give us all good and perfect things come from you, Father. And we thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes down today. Can we give him a hand clap today for his word? God, everything we have is because of you. We give you thanks now in this holiday time and all throughout the year, Father. We give you thanks. We praise you for all the good things you've given us. Thank you. Can you bless the Lord today? Thank you, God, for your goodness. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Great things you've done. Hallelujah. Great things you're doing. Great things you're going to do. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with you today. God bless you. You can make your way back to your seats. Such a wonderful time of Thanksgiving with family. Hope that you all had a blessed week and weekend. But none of that would be without the goodness of our God. It's so good to be in his house today with you. I'm going to sing an old song. How great thou art. Every time I sing this, I'm just really am in awesome wonder of all that God has done. And it's so good to be in his presence. Not just the things the writer says when I consider the worlds thy hands have made, but when I consider that he considers me. The psalmist said, God, when I consider all of that, what is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou visitest him. God knows every small, minute detail about our lives, and he's concerned about it. I'm grateful to know that today, how great he is. Oh, Lord.
joy shall fill my heart. expecting God to do something. If you've not been paying attention to the subsequent services, let me just run back over them for you. It was in my mind today as Bishop was speaking. Brother Matthewson spoke last week on Jose, the mercy of God. Pastor followed that up with happy thanksgiving. His grace still amazes me. Talk about the goodness of God. I'm glad it isn't fair because I get the benefits of that, right? And then Bishop today was talking about the prophet Joel, the prophet of Pentecost. And something that he said, it was preparation for the great day of the Lord but he, he quoted from Joel 2 21 stood out to me as Bishop ended up reading it I wrote it down for the Lord will do great things and then both the songs that we heard today talking about the greatness of God the first song was great things today God wants to do something great in this sanctuary another part of what Bishop was talking about is God's wanting to pour out his spirit and, all, and I'm ready. I was looking around wondering, who, God, are you wanting to pour out the Holy Ghost on? I want it. I hope all of you do. I believe if we get in tune with what God has, they so glad for the McCoys with us, expecting God to do a beautiful thing. I love Thanksgiving, Christmas time. This next month, it's a built-in opportunity to be a greater witness than normal. You know, even the secular world is more attuned to showing kindness and charity and helping others than any other time of the year. Many workplaces adopt a family, ours has, and, and they show the love of God that way. And many of our church families help others in soup kitchens and food pantries, helping spread blessings to others. Because whenever you start to bless somebody else, you find out, you know, I've really blessed myself and my family. I've, I've learned a lesson there. And two weeks from today, we're going to have our Christmas program. Some of you may have seen these little picture flyers. The ushers, the hostesses, the greeters have them. Only take it if you know somebody that you really want to share it with. Don't take it. Just pitch it. It'll, it'll end up just being wasted money that the church has spent for promoting this. But we are going to have a, a wonderful Christmas program, Christmas in Cricket County here, that Saturday and Sunday. From what I understand from the pictures, it's a bit of a comedy. It's going to be fun, enjoyable presentation, but it will leave you with a renewed appreciation for the meaning of Christmas. So spread the light and the love of God everywhere you're going. At the end of service, grab one of these. If you have somebody in mind or a place where you can post it, who knows what God will do through your little witness here 
But whenever somebody comes in the presence of God, God can do all kinds of wonderful things. If our ushers will come, we'll see the tithe and the offering. Ask you to remember Sister Judy Gunter. Many of you know her and Brother Leon Gunter. They ministered here many times over the years. She's had a stroke. I saw Sister Becky had posted some recovery. Believing God's ended up already starting to work there. But asking God for a complete miraculous recovery. Let's ask that in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you for this day and for what you have planned, what you have prepared to happen. We come with hearts expecting to receive something from you, not because we're worthy, because you are so great. You're so merciful and your love is here for us. I ask you to meet every need that's here. I ask you to bless this tithe and offering as we give it to you with joy. Lord, we ask you to minister to Sister Gunter right now. I ask you to minister in healing to her. I ask you to speak the word, minister to her, up the doctors and nurses to be amazed. We'll testify of the goodness of God. We ask your blessings upon the remainder of this service. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Oh, hallelujah. 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 Can we just say that together? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful worship course. And we worship you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Or something about that cadence of worship. I just never get tired of I'm sure your little fingers get tired of playing that run. But it's just something like a cadence of worship that just picks up the spirit. Hallelujah. Digs us out of where we are, where we've been, what we've been associated with, and refines our attention and focus once again back where it belongs. Oh, we worship you, mighty God. We worship you, mighty God. We praise you, mighty God. You are worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God. We worship you, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ah. Oh. Something about the name of Jesus. I said something about the name of Jesus. The, cho the chorale, whatever you want to call them, sang about the name of Jesus. And the choir comes up and sings about the mighty God. I'm glad to know the name of Jesus. I'm glad to be able to call on the name of Jesus. There's times I don't have time to say a prayer. All I can say is, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. How many times have you called out and he was there and he answered? That name was the prayer in and of itself. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we have officially entered into the holidays. That's okay. He came to this earth once and we celebrate his, his coming. I'd just soon, Brother Ralph, wouldn't it be incredible if he came back during the holidays? I wonder how many people would go. <laughs> holidays, we just kind of let go and relax a little bit. And, I, and I, you should enjoy your family, the pumpkin pie and stuff. But um, it's good to be back in the house of God to enjoy the presence of the living God. Amen. I love the house of God. I love the presence of God. And uh, I'm so, I love the family of God. I love every one of you. I love to get with you and come to the house of God and uh, worship the King of Kings. It's something, it's great when I'm by myself and uh, entertaining the presence of God and devotions. Having that one-on-one -on -one time with God and you need that. You've got to have that. But let me tell you, there is an added dimension when we come together with one mind and one accord, brothers and sisters of like faith, and we come into the presence of our Father. It's like everybody goes home for the holidays and gets along. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have gone there. When we come to the house of God, we all have one mind, one accord, one spirit. We're here for one thing, to magnify the King of Kings. It's so what I'm here for today is to give God glory. God may, in turn, I'm believing that he is going to reciproc reciprocate. We've, added, we've lifted up our praise and worship to him. I would love to see God come down in this house today and just baptize all of us afresh in his spirit. There is no need to leave the house of God wanting today or empty. Amen. Praise God. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. It is our privilege today to have Brother McCoy with us. I, am, I was so glad when he called me and told me he was missing his adopted granddaughters. I said, well, come on up and see me too. Well, it didn't quite go that way. <laughs> but uh, uh, he was going to be coming up. And I said, Brother McCoy, please, if you can, I don't want to take away from your biological family. But we, your family in Peoria, would love for you to come up and spend some time with us. I love this man. You know, uh, how many have you ever received a word or a healing touch under this man's ministry? I've seen, I've told you, I feel like I'm walking around with Jesus when I walk around with this man. So calm, so quiet, 
so assured and confident in who God is. He don't get riled up like I do. And I've told you time and time again, I get in trouble for trying to finish his, his slow Texas draw sentences for him. He says, yes, Brother Lashley, that, that's good, but that wasn't where I was going. <laughs> I love this man. I, I truly do. I've inherited a, a wonderful friend from my father. And um, in his own unique, wonderful way of walking with the Lord, Brother McCoy, would you just come to this pulpit and take us back to the throne of grace? Allow the Holy Ghost to flow through you today. Just take your liberty. Will you, will you allow him to take us? Will you open up your spirit and let God speak to you today? Amen. Brother McCoy. God, God bless you, Pastor. Love you. Oh, let's worship the King. God bless you. Just give him. Let's do it again. Let's just give him a wonderful praise offering. ushered us into the presence of the holiest. Amen. Wow, and when you come, or at least today, just coming into his presence, it's like, you know, you just can't do justice to compare the Lord with things. They just, there's nothing in this world that exactly fits. So this is a bad illustration but did you ever see a guy that's muscle bound his arms are about this big and he's about to pop the sleeves he just he's lifted weights and he just and tall guy and you stand next to him and you think power like I said it's a bad illustration but that's kind of how it is today on this platform because there is such power that is here. It's not muscle-bound power like that illustration. It's the power of the presence from on high. He is here. Is there anything that's too hard for God? Oh, hallelujah. Wow, we are in the presence of the Lord. And if we're in His presence... He can do things that we can't do. In fact, if he doesn't, I'm in trouble because I can't do it. And if he doesn't help us today, we're in a fix. But I believe he wants to help us. I'd like somehow at the end of this service for however many that the Lord's wanting to touch, if I've not missed the Lord's will, that your faith would have been strengthened and for some the decision will have been made that I can do this. I can do this. Because you're not trusting in yourself, but you're answering what God is telling you that with His help you can do. I'd like to sing that chorus. If you know it, I will say yes. Yes, yes. I will say yes, Lord. The Lord told Brother Barnes one time to tell his people to say, I can, and they could. And it's, it's not this self that I've decided I can do it. It's There's something about when you get to that place that the commitment is strong enough that you verbalize it in meaning that, I believe it congeals. I have seen many times in praying for people that there would be the prayer of faith, but the healing was not recognized or realized until that person would check for it. That they, when they would respond, it was there. I prayed for, a, or there was a young man one time, I might have told this before, a, grand, a baby grand piano had fallen on his foot. Well, 
he was hobbling around with a crutch, and the Holy Ghost told me to tell him to stomp his foot. I, now, you, you, you know, you can get in trouble doing things like that. It can hurt it worse. When people sue you for any kind of thing almost nowadays. It was the Holy Ghost, and it was kind of like this. There's concrete under that carpet, right? When he stomped his foot, when it hit the ground, it was well. It wasn't well until he responded. When you say, yes, Lord, I believe. If it was the word of God you were answering, there's something that happens in the spiritual realm that the natural realm has to obey. The greater is not the natural. The greater is the spiritual. And we are in a spiritual vein in this service. Oh, hallelujah. I will say yes, yes, yes. I will say yes, yes, yes. I will say yes. Lord is calling for some to a closer, higher place in Him. But we need to make the decision to answer the call. When you sing it again, let Him know, Lord, I'm willing and I want that that you're offering. I will say yes, yes. I will say so much, Lord, for your good desire and will. I pray the hand of the Lord continue to be upon this service and guide and direct us in your word. To you be the glory in the lovely name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. If you'd like to go with me to the book of Mark chapter 10, I'd like to read one verse and then I'll let you be seated. And... Uh, it's okay with me for you to pray for the Lord to help me today. This might be a little bit disjointed in putting together, but I, I, I just somehow hope that I can do justice enough to this that the Lord will strengthen your faith. That the Lord will do a work where there's going to be some difference in some lives. The bottom line is what we're reaching for, really. I like to see the results. I love to see people healed. I love to see miracles take place. I love to see people filled with the Holy Ghost. And I love it when God brings us to a higher relationship with Him. And brings us out of a place where we've been stymied and feel like, I can't get out of this rut. I can't get out of this bog hole. I can't get victory over this that I'm battling. I, I like it when God gets us out of that. And I don't know. Body. I don't need to know everybody, but if you're dealing with something in your life and you maybe even have told the pastor, Pastor, I don't think I can do this. I don't know that that's happened for sure, but if it has, if it's something that God is trying to urge you about, you may not can in yourself, but with God's help, it can be done. The one verse in Mark chapter 10, verse 27 and Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, 
but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. God bless you. You may be seated. I, I like the first part of that verse too. Jesus, look, I've been in services where there was somebody that was ministering that I knew that they had spiritual insight that God talked to them about things. And before they would pray for me, I'd want to be sure that everything was all right with the Lord because I didn't want them seeing anything in me that wasn't right. Anybody else have that idea? You know what I'm talking about? How would you like to be one of the disciples? The, oh, boy. He, you didn't have to tell him. He knew. And this is a situation a young man has come to the Lord, and he's come running. I mean, boy, he had the zeal. He had the desire. He was on his way. And... Good master, what must I do? And the Lord gives him some guidelines, the commandments. And I've kept these from my youth up. Three times in these settings, these scriptures right here close by, the Lord looked. In that setting, the Lord beholding him. And when the Lord looked at the situation, he didn't just see just the features and the expression. I mean, he beheld him. He waited out. He knew. And he knew what was in his heart. And he knew what he loved. And in spite of whatever the Lord might have known about him, he loved him. Could I say if you feel like the devil's been telling you you're not worthy and you're not good enough and you're not talented enough or you're not whatever enough, it doesn't change the fact and the devil wants this to be hidden from you, but it doesn't change the fact that he loves you. He really does. It's hard for some of us sometimes to really get to the place where we accept that I am loved. Beholding him, he loved him. And out of his love for him came an answer of what he needed to do to deal with what the need really was deep in his heart. Because evidently, if we look at these scriptures, this man loved riches. He was doing a whole lot of other things right, but he had something in him that needed a change to be what the Lord wanted him to become. And he told him, go sell all that you have. Give to the poor and come follow me. But he didn't tell him the rest of it. Some people miss church and they don't hear the rest of the answer. He didn't tell the rest of it until he's talking to the disciples later on. And the man went away sorrowfully because he had much riches. It's like, I, I, can't, I can't do that, Lord. And then the Lord... Actually, four times here of him looking. He looked around. And how hardly it is for the rich people to go to heaven. It's easier for a camel. And it's, from what I've heard, it's talking about that doorway and the gate of the city that's a, a little doorway that if somebody comes late, the city gate's not going to be open for them. But there is a little crack in the door. A little door, small door that could be opened. And if it's a camel to get him through, they're not going to open the gates. That camel's got to get on his knees and inch his way crawling through that gate to get inside. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to go to heaven. And his disciples heard this and they were amazed. Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked at them. The one that knew what was in men, knew what was in the heart of individuals. He looked upon them. He knew what they were dealing with. He knew the questions 
the question they were wrestling with about this, and he answered them honestly. With men, this is impossible. But he, they needed to know something, but not with God. You're not dealing with a circumstance. It does not matter what it is that you're dealing with. You're not dealing with a circumstance today that God does not have an answer for. You may not have it. I may not have it. There may not be an answer in human understanding for some things. But God knows. And he said to those disciples... With men, this is impossible. Somebody here is maybe facing a very impossible situation. It's impossible. It's not going to work. There's no way. Not with men, maybe. But with God, all things are possible. And he goes on. He talks about, and here the young man, he's not hearing it because he gave up too quick. He's already left. No man having left, and he names a number of things. And one of those is houses. Another one, I think, is lands. And, and as he goes right down the line, he comes back. Almost every one of those in this lifetime will receive a hundredfold. And in the life to come, eternal life. It's hard to turn loose of some things in life because one thing, sometimes it's our security. And what we feel is our security sometimes is not really, when you look at it, very secure. You just let a Hurricane Harvey come through. I know a little bit about that. I, I, I lost some things due to Hurricane Harvey. There's some things, they're gone. There were some things we treasured that mom and dad had in that house. And Hurricane Harvey came through, and lo and behold, there's some things that you can do without. I'm trying to lay a foundation. He left too quick. You see, there's going to be some difficult situations in life, and God knows it. You were not called to live for God on a bed of roses and ease and everything's going to go your way without any tears, without any anxieties trying to hit you, and, and God knew it. But it's the will of God for you to live a victorious life. My dad told me years and years ago I was pastoring, a young pastor, and I'd gone down, and it's about a, let's see, three or four hour drive, about a uh, maybe about a three-hour drive, and needed to get back for service that weekend. And if I remember correctly, I had car trouble of some kind. So Dad and I are going in the car to to find a part for the car. And maybe Dad felt I was on pressure. My dad, he'd come up with things. And he told me one time, I mentioned it, uh, I, I'd, I, you know, I'd go and pray. And I was pastoring. And I'd pray. And my dad told me, he had a message for me. The Lord gave him a message for me. It was, I need to listen to the Lord too. And, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, this particular time we were in the car going to get a part, and my dad, uh, it just, I didn't ask him for this. He just blurted it out. The victory is not not having the problem. The victory is having the victory through the problem. Wow. <laughs> I don't know if the Lord told him to tell me that or what, but it has stuck with me through the years. The victory is not having, not, not having difficulties in life. You're going to have difficulties in life. We don't look at things just like the Lord does sometimes. He, he's with his disciples and he said, in this world you're going to have tribulation." That's trouble, capital T. You are going to have things that go wrong. You are going to have people that undermine you, that cut you. You're going to be treated wrong. You're going to fall into situations sometimes that you didn't know that pitfall was there. It's just part of life. 
And then some things happen because we took that particular road. There's going to be some trouble in life. But he said, be of good cheer. You got a trial ahead of you. It's time to worship and be happy. Oh, really? Why? Because I, he said, have overcome the world. Now then, you've got to put the dots together. You're going to have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome. How does this connect together? It's one thing for you, Lord, but I'm not, I'm not Christ. You understand, we're not. You see, if I could just paraphrase, the Lord came for, he came for number one, to seek and to save that which was lost. Number two, these are things he said. The second thing he said, he was come to destroy the works of the devil. There's another thing. You see, God wanted us to live for God, and so he told us how. The bishop preached some about it today. The pastor's got this service backwards. He did the preaching before. I heard him some. I'm more or less teaching. <laughs> I hope that you get something out of this. The Lord told us how. You know, another thing about my dad, he could tell me how to do something. If I just wait around, maybe yeah, he'd show me how to do it. And that's what the Lord did. Okay, I want, you to, I want you to live this life of victory. I want you to have peace. He, he told his disciples, my peace, I, I leave with you. Not as the world gives, so I give. I, I want you to do this. I want you to live this life. I want you to have victory over sin. I want you to have victory over the devil. I want you to have victory over the negative things the devil tries to put in your head about yourself. I want you to have victory over the negative things about yourself that I'm going to forgive you of and bring you in victory over. So I'm going to tell you how to do it. And that's not all. I'm going to come down and rope myself in flesh and I'm going to show you how to do it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Glory. Furthermore, I'm going to come back and live in you and help you to do it. And with that kind of a setup, we're going to let the devil tell me, I can't do this. I, I can't live this life. I can't pay this price. I, I can't live this separated life. I can't live this country. I can't have this kind of faith. I, can't, I, I have difficulty believing for what God's promising me. When he said, I'll show you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to live in you and help you to do it. I can do this. Whatever it is, God tells me that God has had difficulty at times getting people to understand, you can do this, Moses. No, 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 Lord. No, not me. And Moses just argued with God. Now, don't raise your hand. But he's not the only one that ever argued with God. Hello? I just... Pastor, I don't know if I can do this. I don't just, you, you're asking me about something that I just don't feel confident. Moses, what's that in your hand? It, it's a stick, it's a staff that I use to chase the coyotes away. and It's got a crook on the end of it, and I can reach out and get a hold of that sheep by the neck and throw it down. Okay, man. And all of Suddenly that thing started wiggling and crawling, and Moses turned and ran. And then God said, Pick it up. <laughs> oh boy. And so Moses chose the tail end to pick up. It turned to stick again. Moses, I want you to go to lead my people. Could God have used somebody else? I don't say God couldn't have, but there was no other Moses that uniquely was like this man. The Bible calls him the meekest man in the earth. Moses, I want you to, Lord, I don't know if I can do this. I'm paraphrasing quite large maybe, but 
put your hand in your clothes. And, and it's all of a sudden, and he knew what leprosy was. Do it again. Leprosy doesn't do that. That hand doesn't turn immediately to leprosy and then suddenly turn immediately back, except that by God's hand it did. Moses, I want you to go lead my people. Lord, send whoever. I can't even talk good. And finally, God got upset with him. Who made the tongue anyhow? <laughs> However, all right, I'll give you somebody to talk for you. I'll tell you, and then you tell Aaron, your brother, and he's already on the way. God saw the argument before Moses ever brought it up. I don't know who I'm talking to all today, if I am. If I'm not, if I'm not missing this, this, there's some people here that there's something in your life that God's wanting to talk to you about and, and somehow get you to the place that you begin to feel like God and I can do this. God and me, we can do this. We can do this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory. And so Jesus came and he knew what you were going to face. And so he faced it first and proved to you and proved to me, you can do this. About one of the worst things going to happen is the devil's going to come. And uh, if you've never fought the devil, we'll just stick around. You see, the enemy, well, and, and it wasn't the devil seemingly that thought this all up. It's like that it was in the mind of the Spirit because the Bible says back there in Matthew, the Spirit led him in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, I thought I was in the will of God. I, I thought I heard from God. And, and then the bottom fell out. Where did I miss God? And, and the devil didn't hit him at first. He waited until he was weak. You come in and you're tired from work and you're weary and, you're, and, and somebody in the house just pricks your balloon a little bit and all of a sudden, all of that pressure erupts. The devil tries to hit you at your weak point. Or maybe you've been under the burden all day and you're cooking and, and the baby's been crying and, or, or whatever the situation is and just at the wrong word it just and back and forth and before you know it the devil is jumping up and down with glee. He got you at your weak point and you let him and you didn't realize what was going on. And so the Lord fasted 40 days, 40 nights and afterwards he was hungry and the devil said, why don't you turn these stones into bread? And we don't find any indication that Jesus got real nervous. We don't see any indication that he was scared, that he ran from it and tried to hide from the problem. He just reached back in the Old Testament. They didn't have the New Testament then yet. He just reached out in the Old Testament, got a scripture and handed it to the devil. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth. And so the devil, boy, he decided, well, I'll try that. So he takes him up to the pinnacle of the temple and, why don't you cast yourself down? Come on, show yourself. A little bit of a, let some pride get involved here. And because it's written, the angels will bear you up. It's also written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Well, he just handled it just as easy. What are you doing, Jesus? Well, there are people that are going to be filled with my spirit, baptized in my name, that are living in my word, and they need to see how it's done. Just get the word and hide it in your heart and use the word. And the devil, boy, comes back. It's not the first time there's been a conflict between Lucifer and Jehovah. You realize that, and the third temptation is where it really is shown what the devil's after. And so he takes him up into this high mountain, shows him the kingdoms of the world, and says, if you'll just bow down and worship, that's what he wanted. If you'll just work, he wanted to be worshiped as God. 
That's the problem back in his beginning of transgression. He wanted, he could see all of that praise and all that glory. He wanted the glory. And I'm flesh and your flesh and my flesh and your flesh likes the taste of glory in case you didn't know it. And Jesus is showing us how to do it. I can do this with the Lord's help. And, and so that third time it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord God thy God. He said, Get thee hence, Satan. And then he told his disciples, I'll give you power over all the power of the enemy. You're going to tread on serpents and scorpions. I have seen this happen before. I've used this before more than once. Young man having, was, was having difficulty with smoking. He'd received the Holy Ghost, but he's having difficulty getting this. And so I prayed with him and, and had him to repent of it. Told him, it's maybe somebody here that I've had this with you about something in your life. But I had him, like he's standing, he's stepping on it. He's got it under his foot. And tell it, in the name of Jesus and upon the authority of the word of God, I take authority over you. And in Jesus' name, I command you to not have any more power over me, but to be gone. Our words are somewhat along that line. So, And then let them know, when the temptation comes back, not only do they use their willpower, but use the word against it and use the name against it. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, you can do this. I said, you can do this. There may be somebody that God's calling you to a life of service. Now, don't, don't get all built up in feeling like, boy, I'm, I'm all ready and I'm out on my own. And, and you go against the pastor's guidance. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about branching off into something where you're kind of a wild burr. But it's under authority. But there may be some people here that God's calling you for a deeper walk with him, a higher walk. There may be somebody here that devil is trying to stop something close to your head and you can't get it broke off. And he's just beating into your mind, into your thoughts, into your feelings, whatever. You can't do it. You can't do it. You're not able. You're not worthy. You're whatever. You're just... God breaks chains. With men, this is impossible, but not with God. God breaks off those hard helmets that the devil tries to put on us. Woo! Hallelujah! Uh, thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for your liberty. Thank you for the freedom and the joy that it's the will of God for us to enjoy, appreciate, and realize. Oh, it's like that girl that received the Holy Ghost in that foreign country, and she was speaking in tongues. To her, it was another language she didn't understand, but there was somebody there who understood English and heard her say in English, the devil is gone, the devil is gone. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. And God was praising through her in the spirit, glorifying the fact God had delivered her from something of the devil. I may have told this before. I was praying for a girl one time, and I was praying in tongues. And I found out after we prayed that it was a language she understood. She had understood, and I had said it was something along this line. If she would lift her hands and worship God, he would forgive her for what she had done. I don't know what she'd done. I didn't have to know. Didn't need to know, maybe. But I, I can visualize, or just sense, or imagine a case where she'd done something that was wrong, and she was under this guilt of it, and the devil was telling her, maybe, you've sinned against the Holy Ghost. You can't get forgiveness. You can't. He's not going to forgive you. But God loved that girl, whatever she was going through. And God did not want her to be under that brow beating of the enemy. God wanted her to be free, and so he told her miraculously, if you lift your hands and worship God, he'll forgive you for what you've done. He's going he's to tell you how to do it. He's going to show you how to do it. 
And then he's going to come and help you to do it. There are people, it has been said, God's people ought to be the happiest, healthiest people in the world. Glory to God. Have you got that script? Did I give you the scripture about Hebrews chapter 11? Could you, brother, put one of you, put up that Hebrews 11? That faith chapter is going through about. These people he's talking about here in Hebrews 11 didn't have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They didn't have Acts through Revelation. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. They weren't baptized in Jesus' name. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David also and Samuel and of the prophets also, who through faith, not receiving the Holy Ghost, subdued kingdoms. I like this one too. Wrought righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, can I have... <laughs> Can I really have this close spiritual walk in righteousness? If they did it without the Holy Ghost, Jesus is telling us, showing us, and helping us that we can have it with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Stop the mouths of lions. Read on, brother, if you would. Next verse. Quench the violence of fire. You talk about a, a spiritual fire truck. You talk about miracles. Through faith, put out fires. Now, that's what that means. It says quenched. Escape the edge of the sword. And I like this one. I can't do it. Lord, send somebody else. I can't even talk. Out of weakness. God's trying to bring you out of that situation that you've been entrapped in, that feeling, I can't, I can't, I can't. Out of weakness, we're made strong. How? Through faith. Wax valued in flight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Let's read on through to the end of that chapter. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others had trial of, evil, of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, bonds and imprisonment. They were, they were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They wandered about, sheepskins, goatskins, destitute, afflicted, tormented. They lived in caves, they lived in, in destitute places. The world was not worthy of them. And these all, not having the Holy Ghost, not having the revelation of the name of Jesus in baptism, not having the New Testament that we have, obtained a good report through faith. They received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing, you are the icing on the cake. Don't you let the devil tell you you can't do it. Don't you let the devil tell you you can't pay this price. Don't, I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't you let the devil tell you you can't measure up to what the Bible teaches for you to do. Don't you let the devil tell you you can't reach out and get a hold of God for your children and your circumstance. Don't you let the devil tell you, you can't have harvest. Hallelujah. That they without us would not be complete. They're not going to be perfect. It's, it's not made perfect. It's not finished yet until God does his work through you. It's, yeah, with men this is impossible. But not with God. Whatever it is that God is giving the promise of, there's some things that, back there where it said obtain promises, I think, in a place. What does that mean? The promise was given, but they didn't have it yet until they obtained it. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to tell something. Don't you feel bad about it, okay, because you've gone through surgery. 
And God can heal with or without surgery. I prayed for a woman one time that something had damaged her arm. I've had this happen more than once. And uh, so she couldn't get her arm. It was, it was her left arm, I think. Couldn't get it up about so far. Or having, and so I told her when she prayed just to put it in the hands of the Lord. She lifted her hands and praised the Lord. And she did not even think about it. She did. And she. What happened? She didn't even maybe realize what happened because I told her, you can't do that. You can't do this. You know what? It's liable to shock you what God does when you just respond in obedience. We were talking about the faith, obedience to the faith. Uh, there was a minister that I told him if he would preach, I would, I would, we were going to have a, a healing service. Uh, we could have a healing service, have a talk. If he would preach, I would pray with him in the altar or however I said. And, and so he preached one of the most beautiful sermons I have ever heard on faith. And he used that case where the young man was Vexed with the devil, Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration and, and the disciples had been trying to cast the devil out and couldn't. And Jesus later told them, this kind goes not out but by fasting and prayer. And he told the dad, he said, there's three times Jesus used the phrase, all things are possible. One was the, where we read today. The, the other, a second one was in this case where he told this man, all things are possible to him that believes. The third occasion was when he was praying, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. All things are possible. He made that statement. But had, and if that's true, that it, if it means that he could have passed that by and not have gone through that death, God could have changed all this. But the situation is that there wouldn't have been any of us here today. There wouldn't have been any tongue talking. There wouldn't have been any salvation. There wouldn't have been any relief from sin. And so the will of God put him on the cross. But in this case, he said to this dad, and this brother, when he preached it, he came across a translation somewhere that said it like this. The dad answered and said in King James, I believe, help my unbelief. I prayed that prayer more than once. He came across a, a translation and said it like this. When faith is too short. So it's like, I believe, I have faith. I have it said, help me when faith is too short. And what this pastor preached was obedience. He obeyed. God healed the son. Obedience can be an act of faith. Obedience to the faith. The pastor talked about it, and he looked it up. It's in the first part of Romans, and it's in the last part of Romans about obedience to the faith. Moses, if you'll obey, I'm going to do something that has never been done before, will never be done again. It's going to be unique. If you'll do it, I'll make the water stand up as a wall on the left and on the right. If you'll do it, you will see me in my part of my glory. If you'll do it, you'll talk to me face to face as a man does with his friend. Lord, I just don't know if I can do this. Would you, would you get somebody else? I, I don't know what it is that God maybe is wanting some people to do, but in, in living for God and coming to a closer walk and a more consecrated walk or, or a victory over something, but if you're arguing with God, friend, let me tell you, it's a losing battle because he's not wrong. He's not telling you you can do this if he's not willing to help you to do it. I don't know how long I've been talking. Uh, I mentioned about my dad. I'm, I'm going to tell a story about him. And it, it's an emotional story to me. I was part of it. God dealt with my dad. He was in the OSS, and, and they got, he got hardened through his experience of training in the war before they went overseas because they taught him to hate. I may have told this before. And then uh, in the OSS, when people got in the way, they took him out of the way. And 
When he came home from the war, he didn't cry anymore. But he went to that Pentecostal service and where his mother-in-law was a, a member of that Pentecostal church. My mother wasn't in that church. And dad sure wasn't. The only experience he'd had in his community, there was a Pentecostal church, and he'd ride the horse. And back in those days, they didn't have air conditions. The windows maybe be open. He could stand on the outside and watch what was going on. And one time he went in, and it just so happened that a man had got him a new Stetson hat. And if you know anything about East Texas old times, that was a prized possession. And he, when they stood, he put it down on the bench. And when they sat down, a girl sat down on it, and they had a knockdown drag out. Drag out. You can imagine what kind of impression that made in my dad. He said, they're weak in the mind. I don't know if it was because of that incident, but he, he even told his sister-in-law, I don't know if she was sister, his sister-in-law at the time, they're weak in the mind. And lo and behold, he's in one of those churches where his mother-in-law is a member. And the preacher preached about receiving the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues. He said, I can't, I can't speak another language, so I can't get the Holy Ghost. I don't understand. He even told the preacher that. The preacher said, I don't understand the rain, but it falls. You'll understand it when you get it. My dad said, he's a smart aleck. I'll get me a Bible and prove him wrong. So we went to town and bought a Bible. <laughs> the more he read it, the more he saw the preacher's right. He's standing there at that pew one service, and he knew my mother wanted to go to the altar, so he said to her, go ahead if you want to go. Not, not real gently, you know. Now, mind you, he wasn't intending to go. But if she wanted to go, he'd let her go. She said, I will if you let me out. And he stepped out to let her out and beat her to the altar. There was a wooden altar bench. There was time at the altar bench. He felt it was wet. He felt his face. His face was wet. That hardness, God broke it up. This was after war, after the war. They went back to Washington, D.C. He was still in the service. And there's some period of time there it switched over. And they closed the OSS and they opened the CIA. They were going to send him to school and train him. I think with the Chinese language and send him to China as one of the agents. He knew he couldn't stay in it and do what they did and live for God. And he couldn't tell mom what they did. It was stuff that you, you couldn't, he wasn't allowed to tell or couldn't tell. And so he, he got out and they let him out. They let him go. He came home and in time he's in the church living for God. And he just wanted to be a good saint. God started dealing with him about the ministry. He didn't want to preach. He just wanted to be a saint in the church. And he uh, had a dream, saw this church full of people, and there was nobody in the pulpit. Lord, just send somebody else, not me, Lord. I can't even talk, you know, Moses. And so God, he had another way of dealing with him. And I remember when we lived on the college farm, and uh, Dad was in school, and we had the opportunity that came to my dad and our family as a result, to live on the college farm. And their dad's working part-time on that farm, and he's driving that tractor with an implement behind it and fell off the tractor and never knew how he got out of the way of that implement. But still, just... And I remember there was a day we had been to the woods, and we'd gotten a tree, and we left the axe. So Dad and I are back. We we're on our way back to the woods to get that axe. And in those East Texas sandy hills, there are places where after years of use, grading that road, that the road wears down so the, the side bank is high and it's just sandy ruts in the road, not a lot of room to maneuver. And in one of those places, I was asleep in the pickup, and I remember waking up, falling out, Somehow the door came open. I fell out. And that dad, he didn't have a whole lot he could do. He just did that steering wheel to try to fishtail the end of that pickup around so it wouldn't run over his little boy. What I remember, I was maybe like five years old. I remember falling out. Hitting the sand. I had sand in my face and my eyes jumping up. Scared my daddy was going to run off and leave me. And I'm up running after the pickup crying. Now, I remember that. 
I also remember that pickup stop and dad coming back and and maybe kneeling on one knee there taking his handkerchief and wiping the sand off. And, but what I didn't know till maybe years later was that when he saw his little boy back there wasn't hurt, he's kneeling by his little boy, he was saying, yes, God, I'll preach. Yes, Lord, I'll preach. He didn't want to be a preacher, but let me tell you, because of his answer to God, a church was raised. There was a man that, as a prophet, told him, if you'll go to this certain place, you'll build a church. And God built a church there, and there is an awesome church there today, an awesome church. And I, don't know, I do not know how many ministers came out from under his ministry. I do not know how many second and third generation ministers that came out from under his ministry. I do not know how many tens of thousands, if not in the hundreds of thousands, that were affected through his ministry and through ministries of those that came out from under his ministry. I don't want to preach. I just want to be it. But, but you don't see what I'm wanting to see. I'll tell you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it. And I'll help you to do it. And I will produce Lives upon lives upon lives, souls upon souls, country after country that is affected somehow as a result of your ministry. He didn't see all of that at the time. And what you don't see right now and whatever it is that God's trying to get you to wrestle with and overcome is the victory upon the victory upon the victory beyond that and what you're going to rejoice in. Because right now you see if I'm right in saying these things, you're, what you see is I can't. I'm not able. I don't have the funds. I don't have the ability. I don't, I don't have the resources. I don't have the resources of people. I don't, have, I, I, I don't know how. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't raise your hand. But is the Lord trying to talk to somebody today that I want you to reach out in faith and get a hold of this? I know it's impossible for you, but I'm not asking you to do this by yourself. I'm going to help you. I've told you how to do it. I showed you how to do it. And now I'm going to help you to do it. And with my help and with my spirit, it's not by might nor by power, saith the Lord. It is written, but by my spirit. Or it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's what the scripture says. So, Lord... I don't feel a whole lot of confidence in myself, maybe, but with your help, I can do this. With your help, I'm not only in the situation where I can't. With your help, we're going to do this. I'm going to, it doesn't mean you're not going to have trials. You are going to have trials. It doesn't mean you're not going to face the devil. You are going to face some devils in life. It doesn't mean there's not going to be heartaches and problems, but with God's help, we can go through this. With God's help, we're going to get through this. With God's help, we're going to come out on the other side. With God's help, I am going to rejoice again. With God's help, I am going to feel the joy of the Lord. With God's help, I am going to see somebody get the Holy Ghost. With God's help, I am going to get an answer to my prayers. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I will say yes, Lord. I will say yes, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Would you just close your eyes and just right where you are, would you just begin to talk to the Lord and let God talk to you? And like my dad said, not only do we need to talk to the Lord, we need to listen. Hallelujah. What is your will, God? What is it that you're wanting me to do? What is it that you're wanting me to give up? What is it that you're wanting me to say no to or yes to? Whatever it is, if I can give you everything, if I can surrender to you everything, you can take it and you can use it and you can bring something good out of it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I will say yes. I think it's a little high. I will say yes, yes, yes. I will say yes, yes, yes. I will say yes, Lord. I will say yes, Lord. I will say.
just feel like the Spirit of the Lord is dealing today. I don't know what it's all about for sure with everybody, but I just feel like the Lord wants you to overcome or the Lord wants you to be obedient to his call. Or there's something the Lord's dealing with somebody or some people about. I would like for you to come as we're singing this chorus. Stand in this sanctuary. And let him know, Lord, I give you my whole life. I give you my whole life. I give you my whole life. And I will be obedient. I'm asking if you would. I'd like to ask everybody, would you gather together in this altar area and surrender everything to him? Don't hold back your family. Don't hold back your finances. Don't hold back your lifestyle. Don't hold back anything. Your possessions. Your future. Put everything in his hand. Yes, God. And make that commitment today. I can do this with God's help. I can do it. circumstance to make your decision. You need to make it now. You need to determine now, this is what I will do with the help of the Lord because this is God's will for me. This is what I'm going to do when that circumstance comes, when that devil tries to come, when those friends, whatever, because this is what God wants me to do. And so I commit to you, God, that with your help, I'm going to do it going to do it. I will say yes, yes, yes. I will say You know how to, you know how to believe for this, and they did. They and they acknowledged this. It's the same spirit, a different operation. Whatever it is you're facing, you need God to do this for you. The same spirit that moves, fills people with the Holy Ghost. They speak in tongues. It can operate in that. 
How many of you right now, you have something you need God to do? You sincerely, would you raise your hand? And it's in the will of God. It's something maybe God's been dealing about, something you need. Would you raise your hand? I need God to do this. We're going to pray for it. We're going to ask God to move in it. The same Holy Ghost that causes a person to speak in tongues. I have seen the time that when, if we could all move into the Spirit, in the operating of the Spirit, miracles would take place. And if God can do a miracle of healing, God can do a miracle of deliverance. God can do a miracle of divine intervention. God can do a miracle of divine provision. So whatever it is, I want us just to move in faith and operate in faith. Would you lift those hands again and put that as a request to the Lord? You're giving it to the Lord. Put it in His hand right now. And let's go together and agree together for the Lord to move on these in His will. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the hand of Almighty God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, afflictions turn loose. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the doors open for the divine provision of God according to the will of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of Je in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name. Lay hold in Jesus' name by faith. Lord, see this need. Every hand that was lifted, Jesus, see it, I pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the hand of the Lord be upon it. Amen. Thank God for hearing. Thank God for hearing. Thank God for hearing. Hallelujah. Thank you for hearing, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Would you find someone close to you? If you have a need, let them know maybe. Would you just, you don't have to tell them what it is. Let's pray together. Let's pray for one another, would you? Find someone right now. Lord, bless my brother. Bless my sister. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.
personally don't want anybody to know about it, but if there's something you need direction about, you need God to give you direction about, would you raise your hand? I need the Lord to give me direction about this. All right, anybody else? There's two, three hands. Praise God. And folks, let me tell you, there's times we need direction. Right. I'd like for those to come stand right here with me. Bishop, would you come and pray for us, for God to give direction? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name. Whatever kind of direction it is, God knows, if it's something just in life, if it's spiritual, whatever, anything, I need direction from the Lord. Anybody else, feel free to come right on up. God, we need you to show us the way. We need you to plant our steps in the right place. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, you are our great God and Savior. You have given yourself for us. And with your name, your word, and your spirit, and your applied blood, you have given yourself to us. You are the Emmanuel, God with us. You are the omnipresent and omniscient. You are everywhere, know and see everything. Now you see the directions that we, your children, need. You said, I am the way. And Lord, in you and you in us, we ask you, show us the way. Lord, you said that our steps are ordered by you and our stops is like. And I pray that you would help us, Lord, to take the steps in the direction that you want us to take and to stand firm as we wait in faith for the next step. Holy God. Oh, holy God. Would you lift your hands and thank God right now? Holy God, we stand waiting on you to speak the word inwardly within us. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Mighty, mighty, mighty God. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Right here, right now, you are active in our midst. Your eye is upon our next step. You know exactly, Lord, what you're doing. And we wait upon you in faith, and we move in faith as you instruct us. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Could I say maybe to someone, because you have taken the step of commitment to God and his will, that God is going to show glory as a result in your future because of what you did today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, God is so real. 
It's so good to be in his presence. Just to walk right close to Jesus. Is anybody here, you've got a pain? You've been having some pain in your abdomen area? I think maybe a lady. That that you need the Lord, whatever it is, to heal that. If not, don't believe for it. But if you are, would you raise your hand? Praise God. If, If you're here and you think about it, come let me know before you leave. Is anybody else, you need prayer for anything of healing? Would you raise your hand? There's one, two. Glory to God. Can God do this? Absolutely. We've seen God work. We know God can do it. Let's go to the Lord for it. In Jesus' name.
ask God, with God I can do this. With God I can do this. With God I can do this. Hallelujah. 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 spoke and said if I by the finger of God that was a phrase that the rabbis really understood from the day of the mount when the finger of God wrote the word indelibly in stone it was a phrase that stood for God as he touched this earth in giving us directions, instructions, and righteousness. And Jesus is just simply saying, if I, by the finger of God, giving you instruction and direction, and God's touched us today, and God said, I will do great things, and he's gonna do it for you. You'll just grab it and say, with God, I can do this. What was it the apostles said? Philippians 4.13. And he's locked into a sale. I visited that sale several years ago. When I went to Rome. It wasn't on the tour. And we had been everywhere. We were tired. I said, now, Amartine Prison Sale is just about a quarter of a mile down this road. And I'm going to it. It's just a big rock. You go up steps, it's been carved on the side of the rock. It's inside somewhat of a, a dome on the top floor. Then you go over to, across to the wall and down to the left, and it's stairs that's carved out of the side of the rock. And then there's a chamber underneath that. Got a flat dome of rock, maybe five, six feet thick, separates the lower from the upper. And it's carved circular. And over on the... Uh, what did I say? Not the mountainside, but the air side of the mountain. They had a little porthole about eight inches in diameter that I could reach up and barely touch the bottom ledge. So all you could see is light coming through it. And they said Paul was four foot eleven, and uh, he couldn't have even reached up and touched it. That's where he was. They didn't even come down the stairs to feed him. There's a hole approximately 12 inches or so from the upper down through the stone floor that was chiseled and they lure his food to him. There he was. And yet he said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And we are notorious for taking one verse and forgetting the context. But the context just prior to that is that I've learned in whatsoever state, wherever I am, whatever I'm faced with, I trust God and I can be content that he sees the future and he sees how close I am to it. And so God sees where you are and where the victory or where the victory is going to show itself to you. But if you will focus on him knowing that he sees the victory and you don't know how close it is to you. One step. We've heard it said so many times, I don't care how out of shape a person's life is, one church service could make the difference. One touch of God could transform time and eternity. Oh, would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? You are in that touch right here, right now. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And my God shall supply all of your need. Oh, hallelujah. By his riches in Christ Jesus. You're dismissed. God go with you.